Many movies claim to be based on real-life stories. While some of them might include some snippets of the actual events, it is rare that they provide a full and accurate picture of what happened. But have you heard of a movie that not only shows exactly what happened but also tones down the events depicted because they are too traumatic? This is the true story of The Conjuring, The Perrin Family, a movie produced in 2013 that was said to be so traumatic that it earned an R rating instead of the PG-13 rating that the producers initially wanted. In the early 1970s, the Perrin family moved into a secluded farmhouse in Harrisville, Rhode Island. They had no idea that their dream home would become a nightmare. For years, they were tormented by a malevolent presence that seemed determined to destroy their lives. The Perrin family consisted of Roger and Carolyn and their five daughters, Andrea, Nancy, Christine, Cindy, and April. They were excited to start their new life in the countryside after buying an old 14-room farmhouse situated on a 200-acre estate. The house had gone by many names, including the Dexter Richardson house and the Old Brook Farm. When the family purchased the estate, it was known as the Old Arnold Estate. It was the ideal place to raise their children, with ample grounds for them to play. Andrea had her own room, while Nancy and Christine shared another, and April and Cindy shared yet another. However, from the very beginning, strange things happened that should have raised red flags. For example, the man who had sold them the house had told them to leave the lights on at night. Soon after moving in, mysterious things started happening in their home. Doors would open and close on their own, without any apparent cause. Strange noises could be heard in the dead of night, such as footsteps and whispers. Carolyn noticed that the broom moved by itself within the house. There were also scraping sounds on the kettle, despite no one being in the kitchen, and piles of dirt on the kitchen floor, even when it had been cleaned thoroughly. As for the girls, strange things started happening to them too. They even heard voices. Cindy Perrin, in particular, said that she would find her things missing or that they would often be shoved under the bed, which led her to accuse her sisters. And her sisters would deny touching any of her stuff. She could also hear a menacing voice in the room that she told her sister April said, there are seven dead soldiers in the walls. The younger sisters would huddle in their big sister Andrea's room, scared of what they had seen or heard. But not all of the ghosts were bad. There were some benevolent ones that the girls befriended and even called one Manny. In fact, Cindy Perrin says that for the first two months they lived in the house, there was an entity that came into her room and kissed her forehead every night during bedtime. She thought it was her mother, but it wasn't. Their mother smelled like ivory soap while the entity smelled like flowers and fruit. However, there were other entities that were malevolent, such as a voice that kept crying for its mother at night. There was also the stink of rotting flesh that permeated the house. Carolyn Perrin seemed to receive the brunt of the malevolent entity's anger. One time she woke up to see an entity by her bed, the head of an old woman hanging by one side over an old grey dress. And it delivered a message in a booming voice, Get out. Get out. I'll drive you out with death and gloom. There was also one night when Carolyn Perrin sat in the living room. She suddenly felt a piercing pain in her leg. When she looked at her calf, blood was trickling and it looked as if it had been pierced by a large needle. The entity also hid Carolyn's things all the time, which made her feel as if she was going crazy. She also felt drained and exhausted. The family also learned that many other tragic events had taken place on the property over the years. The land had been used for farming, and there had been accidents and deaths involving farm animals and workers. The old Arnold estate had a disturbing history. The property had been owned by one family for eight generations, and many of the members died under horrible circumstances. There were drownings in a nearby creek, the murder of an 11-year-old Prudence Arnold by a farmhand, and two suicides by hanging, one suicide by poisoning, and four men who froze to death, just to mention a few. 
it seems some of them never left. As the Perrin family struggled to deal with the malevolent presence in their home, they started to investigate the history of the house and the surrounding area. They discovered that the house had a dark and disturbing past. In the 19th century, a woman named Bathsheba Sherman had lived in the house. Bathsheba Sherman was born in 1812 in Rhode Island, USA. She married Judson Sherman, a farmer, when she was in her 20s, and they had a son named Herbert who was born in 1849. There are also claims that they had three other children who died before the age of nine. However, there are no census records of them that would have been used to confirm the accuracy of these claims. However, it is said they may have died before the next census. It's unclear when she died, but some sources suggest that she passed away in 1885 at the age of 73. Bathsheba was accused of killing an infant in the mid-19th century by impaling a needle in its head. Locals claim that this had been done as part of a satanic ritual. However, she was never formally charged, and there is no conclusive evidence to support the claim. Some speculate that the accusation was spread by neighbors who were envious of Bathsheba's beauty and wealth. Despite the lack of concrete evidence, rumors about Bathsheba's supposed witchcraft and malevolent behavior persisted for many years after her death. These rumors were fueled by her reputation as a recluse and by the fact that several of her children died young. Some even claimed that she had sacrificed her children to the devil in exchange for beauty and youth. Her body apparently turned into stone as soon as she died. There are claims that she had died from an unexplainable form of paralysis. Her grave, however, can still be visited at the historic Baptist Cemetery in downtown Harrisville, Rhode Island. The story of Bathsheba's haunting and malevolent spirit was popularized by the 2013 horror film, The Conjuring. However, there is little to no historical evidence to support the claim that she was a malevolent spirit or that she haunted the Perrin family's farmhouse in the 1970s. In fact, according to Andrea Perrin, one of the daughters of the Perrin family, there was no mention of Bathsheba during their initial investigation with the Warrens. The story of Bathsheba's supposed haunting only emerged years later, after the publication of a book about the Warrens' investigations. Overall, while Bathsheba Sherman's life was shrouded in mystery and rumor, there is little historical evidence to support the claims that she was a malevolent spirit or that she haunted the Perrin family's farmhouse. The family began to believe that the malevolent presence in their home was connected to these tragic events from the past. The Perrin family was desperate for help. A family friend, Barbara, reached out to a local paranormal investigator named Ed Warren and his wife Lorraine, who had been working nearby and were informed about the paranormal experiences in the Perrin family. The Warrens were experienced paranormal investigators who had dealt with many cases of demonic possession and haunted houses. They couldn't pass up the opportunity to investigate the paranormal activities that were going on in the household. They made many trips over the 10 years that the Perrins lived in the house. But unlike in the film, they weren't of much help. After listening to the story of the malevolent entity in the house, the Warrens concluded that it was Bathsheba Sherman who was haunting the house. They claimed that she had murdered her daughter as a sacrifice to Satan and had established black rituals before taking her own life in a bid to remain on the property to haunt it forever. They also said that she had hung herself, and that is why Carolyn saw apparitions of a woman with a noose around her neck. They immediately recognized the malevolent presence in the Perrin family home as a demon. They therefore tried a seance, and not an exorcism, as those were only done by Catholic priests. Unlike in the movie, where the Warrens were successful in banishing the malevolent entity, the Warrens in real life conducted a seance, trying to communicate with the spirit. But the demon was powerful, and it fought back with all its might. The demon possessed Carolyn Perrin, causing her to act violently and speak in strange languages, and levitating. The girls were banned from the Shayans, however, and Andrea and Cindy hid and witnessed the event, which horrified them to the core. They say their mother was levitating and thrown from her chair and speaking in tongues not of this world. This lasted several hours until the entity stopped harassing Carolyn, 
and then Roger Perrin threw the Warrens out since all they did was make everything worse. The Perrin family moved out of the house soon after the exorcism. They left the property to the Warrens, who continued to investigate the paranormal and help people who were being tormented by malevolent entities. The story of the Perrin family haunting became the inspiration for the hit horror movie, The Conjuring. But for the real-life Perrin family, the haunting was all too real. Andrea wrote a book called, House of Darkness, House of Light, detailing her family's experiences. The book would go on to become a bestseller and further popularize the Perrin family haunting. The Perrin family haunting serves as a warning of the dangers of the supernatural and the importance of seeking help when faced with malevolent entities. It is a chilling reminder that sometimes, the scariest stories are the ones that are true.